All right. We got into Genesis chapter six last week. Kind of a little, little bit of a review. Genesis chapter, like I've said earlier, Genesis chapter six is one of the most contra one of the most controversial chapters in the in Scripture. Uh, it talks about uh, the giants and so forth. Uh, the Hebrew and in the Hebrew, the Nephilim, B'nai, uh sons of sons of God, and, and of course that's a little G, uh, and the daughters of men, and and uh, and in, the, in so doing came to each other, and in so doing brought about. Uh, the, uh, the the giants is what the scripture talks about and so we got to about I think chapter I mean chapter 6 verse uh, well, let's, let's start at verse 4 I think we got on down but let's start at verse 4 again it says there was giants in the earth in those days and that was because of what I just talked about also after that and, and also after that and that's, that's an interesting phrase there and a lot of people and that uh, 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 point this out that it that it didn't end with the flood that somehow or another it continued on because it says and after and, and also after that and we do know that that was the case because we know of da David and, and uh, Goliath a giant uh, that David killed Goliath and there were other giants in the in the uh, uh, northern part of Israel up there around uh, uh, at one time in uh, Bashan area. The bulls of Bashan was, was what, one thing what uh, Jesus said, or I believe he said, or thought when he was hanging on the cross. He talked about the, or he thought about the bulls of Bashan. You can read it in Psalms 22. Uh, that was surrounding him, and that uh, I believe that was the spirits of these uh, of these uh, giants, if you will. But uh, but anyhow, it says, and after that, when when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And I think it, this is also a reference to where, where, where many of the uh, Greek mythology come from about uh, uh, Zeus and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Hercules and all that come from. A lot of that mythology come from them because I think that they were scattered in that area. And possibly uh, uh, it's what the start of the... Uh, what is the epic of Gilgamesh or Gilgamesh? I don't know if any of y'all have read that, but deals with that as well. Uh, but anyhow, uh, it says they bear children unto them and they become uh, men of renown. Uh, even uh, even uh, uh, Alexander the Great claimed to be the son of a god. He, he said his mother uh, uh, was bare him, but he was not. He was not really the son of Philip. Uh, of Macedonia, but that he was actually he believed that he was the son of a god. And in fact, when he when he went down south uh, and below Israel, below Israel, and into the uh, into the Egyptian area, uh, uh, he went out into a, a, the wild no, I said the wilderness. It's actually in the desert, desert, just to go to one place to that uh, he uh, that recognized the his father, what he claimed to be his father. It's kind of weird, but uh, that's he, he he made that pilgrimage while he was there. Uh, anybody anybody uh, that knows much about history knows that Alexander the Great was, uh, in fact, the tactics that Alexander the Great used in conquering the known world at that time are still some of the same tactics as the military use today. Still some of the same things they use it in a much wider air spread, but they still use his tactics. But anyhow. Getting back to the, I got, getting back to what we were talking about, uh, they were uh, uh, in verse five. Let's look at verse five now. It says, "And God saw that the wickedness of men in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts, a thought of the thoughts of their heart, were only evil on evil continually." God thought that the, God saw that all this was evil, and, and I believe that. Uh, because God destroyed the earth, as we know, destroyed the earth uh, with a flood, and destroyed all the all human supposed to be all well not supposed to be all the human beings and uh, uh, also the animals. That's the reason the ark was there. And, got, and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but uh, I believe that 
not only was all man, what I'm saying is not only was all of mankind corrupt, but all the animals, animals, they had, it says, it says here, imagination of their thoughts and his hearts were on only evil continually. They had done all kinds of things that was against God, against the creation that he made, and that's why God wanted it all destroyed, everything. And again, uh, I do believe that the, uh, now how, you asked me how they came about again after the flood. I don't know if it was maybe through one of the one of the sons of Noah's wives or something, but anyhow, it did come back somewhat because, of, again, like I said, we know of David. Uh, I don't know, I, no, we don't know exactly how it come about, but Satan don't give up. He keeps on doing it, he keeps on doing it, and somehow or another he, uh, he has continually tried to, to mar the, uh, uh, what God created in man. And, uh, and, it, and uh, of course, it, it, uh, we know that that's what happened when, when uh, he, he tried to destroy Jesus as well. But anyhow, it says, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. That's something for God to be grieved at his heart. It must be extremely wicked at that time. And I want to keep reminding you that Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And I believe we're living in those days today. We're living in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And so and so, it's going to be pretty soon that God, uh, that God is, all of mankind is going to be wicked. Now, how can I say that when the church is here? Well, the thing about it is, I don't believe the church will be here. I think the church will be taken out at some point in time, like uh, like he took out Enoch, and like he took out Elijah, and like Jesus was uh, was 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 resurrected. We will have a new life and a new body in, in some point, form or fashion. But anyhow, getting back to this, God is something. To, it's something to read that God was grieved in His heart over the continue the the. Uh, uh, what he had made and what he had created. Uh, it, it just, it was not at all what he wanted it to be. And I, did God know it? Yeah, he knew it would happen, but it still grieved him. Don't you think he's still weeping over God's yeah. present time right now? Absolutely. So much evil. It's grieving his heart right now, just like just like it was then when man, when man uh, and people were in this earth today shaking their fists in his face. And saying that you don't exist, or we're going to do this, kind of like it, it like it says, uh, like at nine eleven. I've said this before. You've heard me say it. Nine eleven. Uh, the only thing that we said uh, in America that is that we're going to rebuild better and stronger. You never heard any politician or anybody say we're going to repent and turn back to our God. No, they didn't say that. They just said we're going to rebuild and we're going to rebuild stronger than before. You never heard anybody, you heard them stand, I think they stood out on the steps of the Capitol and they sang a couple hymns, I believe, but they never once did you hear any of them say that we America needs to repent. And and so that I think that's just like shaking your fist. God sends a warning and it didn't do any good. And it was a pretty good warning too with a, I say good, a, a pretty spectacular, I guess is a better word, warning for what happened at 9-11. But... But anyhow, uh, it's the same thing. It's shaking your fist in the face of God is is uh, and saying, God, I don't want your help. I don't want you. I can do it all myself. Mankind can say, and I can do it. I can accomplish it. And so I think we're here. You're right. It was just a, it's just as bad, or getting just as bad today as it was then. Uh, but anyhow, it says, and the Lord said, I will destroy man, whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and creeping things and fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. See what he's saying? It repented God that he didn't even make root. Not only had had the man turned evil, but somehow or another what man had done would destroy the the, the way that the, the, the animal kingdom as well. It repented God that he had made them and he wanted to destroy it all. And of course, we know what he done, but 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 what he done is we'll see in just a minute as we read along here that he makes a way for the the clean uh, 
genome of the of the creation to 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 continue on. Remember, well, well let's go ahead, go ahead and look at it. But there's a strange verse here. Noah, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, there's a song. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> I'm sure you, most of y'all have heard that, but it's a but it's a profound statement for what was going on in the earth at this time. Uh, it says, and then verse nine clarifies it a little bit. It says, "These are the generations of Noah, and Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God." All right, a lot of people, and and it's true, a lot of people interpret that to be that Noah was a righteous man, that he was a good man. And I think he probably was. That's what it says here. Uh, but it says that we, he was perfect in his generations. What does that mean? Does that mean he was a perfect man? Did he never sin? Did he never done anything wrong? Is that what it means? I don't think so. I think he was just, he, he was a righteous man. I believe he tried to please God. Uh, and But but if he wasn't perfect. What it means is he was, when it says he's perfect, in his generations, uh, for for lack of a better term, I believe that it means that he was perfect in his in his uh, 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 makeup of who he was. In other words, he was physically still a human being. He hadn't been he hadn't been his his bloodline hadn't been affected by uh, having a descendant maybe of one of these one of these Nephilim that had not been entered into his bloodline. If, if you notice that it says he walked with God, and that's the very same thing that is mentioned in verse 24 of the previous chapter, that Enoch walked with God. Right. So there's something special. And then we're told all in the Old New Testament about walking in the Spirit, walking with God, the, yep. the spiritual walk that we have. That's exactly right. Uh, there's, that's that's what we as Christians. That's why that's why Jesus said, you know, when when uh, when the disciples come to him and ask him about uh, John the Baptist, and he said, "There's never been a greater than John the Baptist." Remember, he said that he was he was, and that's Jesus saying a lot. He was greater than Noah, uh, Moses. He was greater than Noah. He was greater than any of the prophets. He was greater than Abraham. Jesus said that of John the Baptist. But then what did he say? But the least of these in my kingdom will be greater than John the Baptist. If we walk with God. If we walk with God. And that's what that, that's what that's, that's what that, that's, that's what filling in what you're saying there. They're walking with God. They're, Jesus, Jesus proclaimed John the Baptist great, but he's pro proclaiming people in our generation that are Christians that have accepted him and so on. And that's the reason. Because John the Baptist, he was the last one to be in, influenced by the Spirit. Because from that point, when, when, when the church come along, you, it's not just being influenced by the Spirit, but it's the Spirit be, becoming living in us and becoming a part of us. And that's the reason why. I know I'm kind of chasing the rabbit off, but that's, that's really pointing out what you're saying here. Wonder, it seems to be a, we have a problem with this word perfect. And over the years, I've seen that God, in obedience, this is what he's looking at. Even Moses was most favored by God. It says that he spoke to the other prophets in visions and dreams, but he said he spoke to Moses face to face. Mm -hmm. and that means something. It means that we can't have a greater relationship. I'd like to wait for you, Roger, you get to maturity. You know, I can go above you, or you don't have to wait on me that you can have as much of God as you are hungry mm -hmm. or thirsty. And, and look what he did. He got mad at Moses because, remember, he first told him to strike the rock and the water would gush out. He told him to speak to the rock the second time. He struck, he struck it again. He was aggravated because of disobedience. He, disobe he didn't get to go to the promised land. And to me, that sounds like a little offense. <laughs> Moses, come on, that's all right, buddy. But he, he is offended. And God defeated in a, in a lot of other things. He's in, in the wilderness, remember, the children of Israel, he just delivered with great miracle what happened in the wilderness that he said, I'm going to destroy all of you and start off in Moses. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing here. He, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And now instead of destroying all of us, the entire creation, he picks everyone. Even Nineveh had a chance, and God spared them through, the, through Jonah. But later on, Nineveh was completely destroyed. So obedience is what I look at, and we can do that. We, we might not say, I, I'm scared of perfection, but obedience, just doing what God says. That's what, that's a couple things of what you said is what I've said quite often, that, that people, you, you, you're saved by grace, but he wants us to be obedient. We want to be, but then we should be obedient, not because we fear him, but because we want to please him. That's right. And one other thing, you mentioned striking the rock. Well, that's really chasing the rabbit for me. But did you did you realize that when he struck the rock uh, the first time, that was like Jesus being struck. And when he when he struck the rock the second time, that's the reason God got mad. But because you don't strike Jesus but one time. He's only died one time. He'll never die for us again. He's only, and and then he said you should speak to the rock. And that's that's what we are to do. We're to speak to the rock in our heart. Uh, he is he that that rock is in us now. You might say. And one other one to to add to that, Roger. Remember when Saul was asked to destroy what all the people, mm -hmm. all the animals, and again partial obedience is no good. He said, "I killed out the best." Mm -hmm. and God was furious. His kingdom was stripped from him right then. Mm -hmm. All, even though it took 40 years to yeah. replace him with David, his kingdom was stripped because partial obedience. As far as God was concerned, he was no longer king right. from that point on. I, I agree. But uh, but this this about Noah here, it says he's perfect. And he, I believe it, what it's saying is he's, he was an obedient man yes. like we were talking. And he followed after God. <laughs> but when he says he's perfect in his generations, I think it's also speaking of his genes, that he has not got, his genes have not been corrupted by the, by the, what was going on there. When the sons of God come into the daughter's man, he had not been corrupted. He was still a man. And that means that his descendants would be, uh, would still be perfect in man. Uh, but anyhow, let's read on. It says, and Noah, and Noah walked with God. And that's what you're talking about there, really. It says he walked with God. And Noah be, oh, wait a minute jumped around here on me. Uh, and Noah, it says, and Noah begot three sons, Ham, excuse me, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh, uh, I'm going to tell you up front here, Shem is the descendants of the people in the Middle East, Israel. Uh, that's, that's the Shemites. Uh, uh, the Japheth is the descendants, I think, from what I understand, uh, of the uh, of the People that all around in the, in Europe and that, that kind of thing. Is the, he's there. He's there. Uh, and Ham was is the ones that went south. I think south. And so Ham, his a lot of his descendants is around in um, in um, in Africa and and maybe maybe as far out in the, as far, the far east, maybe in the, in uh, China. That's what I've understood. But uh, but this, this God focused on the Shemites. The Shem, Shem, uh, from, from uh, the descendants of Shem. Anyhow, let's look at this. He's got three sons and says, the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. Remember when it says this, the, the, corrupt, the, the earth was corrupt. That's why to, it's, it's, it's interesting why now, why in America are we wanting to de defund the police? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's silly, but it's really bad. We want to de the people that want to Say what's right, what's good is wrong, is bad, and what's bad is good, and they're just, and that's exactly what it's talking about here. Their 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 heart was on evil continually, and it's taking place again in this earth today. Uh, and I've said I've said you know, uh, of course, not just here, but even afterwards, that the Israelites got to destroying their children, offering them up to Baal sacrifice and so forth, and and America's doing it too. We're offering our children up as sacrifices. In fact, we've probably offered more children up on sacrifice than any other nation in the face of the earth ever in history. We have done it. Do you think God's going to th overlook that? He's not. In my day, preacher called the Antichrist a lawless one. Yeah. Why, 
how you will get the lawless one to come about if you don't do away with the lawful <laughs> beliefs. Mm -hmm. We're living in a wicked world. Yeah. And it's going to get worse, I'm yeah. afraid. It's going to get worse. It's bad or worse. Yeah. Uh, and that, and that's what it's, that's, that's, again, that's what it's saying here is the days of Noah. We're entering into the days of Noah again, folks. We're entering right into the, right into the belly of the beast, you might say. Uh, the earth also will be corrupt before God. The earth was filled with vile, filled. I don't mean to say that it was just a little bit of violence here, a little bit of violence there, but it says filled. That means it's everywhere. Uh, we, uh, of course, we think we're out in the country and we, we don't see a lot of it, but but we're, it's coming, folks. It's already here in many respects. Uh, anyhow, uh, I keep hitting the wrong place and it keeps jumping up in front of me here. It says, and, and, and it says in verse 12, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All flesh. That don't just mean men. That means everything was corrupt. Animal kingdom, everything had been corrupted by what man was doing at this point in time in history. And what are we doing today? We got scientists. In fact, the scientists that says that they have crossed a man uh, or the man's genes with uh, I can't remember what animal it was, a pig, I believe it was, and uh, and uh, I don't know what's taking place with it, but but, but I think that's where it's going to come coming to. Well, that's where I believe this antichrist will come from. It will be man's gene. He will be a son of. Uh, He'll be a part of a man, but he'll be part of the Satan, basically is what I'm saying. He will be a, a, a descendant, you might say, of, of Satan. But anyhow, it says the earth was corrupt before man. Uh, God looked upon the earth, and it, all flesh was corrupted in, their, in his, uh, his way upon the earth. In other words, everything that they did was corrupt. Uh, we're getting a... And my, my, I don't want to get political here, but I don't think it can help it nowadays. But uh, but our government's corrupt. <laughs> it's corrupt as it can be. Uh, they can they can look at one person, they can declare him evil and, and needs to be arrested and locked up, and they can look at somebody else who is evil and and really evil and really corrupt, and and just pat him on the back and say, "Go with me." Uh, our government is, is corrupt, it's, and it, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't vote because we should. We should vote. All the other countries with the dictators in, this is one of the worst countries there. It's, it is. It really is. Yeah. I mean, I love America. If, yeah. if, if I was, we was in, of course, I ain't, I ain't too strong anymore. But I'd fight what I could. I'd, if I needed to, to try to defend my family and my home and my country. But, but. What happens, I've, I've said this all along, is, as long as America stay, stands, uh, uh, is le led by the, the, the principles of Judeo-Christian principles, that it would, it would continue to grow and prosper. But the moment we turned our back, and we're turning our back on Israel today, and we turned our back on God, and when we do that, we're going to go down, go down in flames. I'm afraid we're, we're doing that today. We need to pray for our country. And we do need to do all our part, but I believe we're we're entering into the entering into the, the days of Noah. Uh, and God said unto Noah, verse thirteen, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them uh, with uh, them with the earth. In other words, God God's telling Noah he's going to destroy all flesh, not just humans, but everything, all the animal kingdom, all. Even birds, uh, he's going to destroy. Make thee an ark, he says, of gopher wood. Uh, rooms shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which ye shall make it. Of the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. The breadth of it shall be 50 cubits, and the height of it shall be 30 cubits. All right, God's given, God's basically given uh, uh, Noah uh, building plans to build the ark. And uh, uh, 
the, the ark, a lot of people laugh at it and they show when some barges draw a little boat with a giraffe sticking his head out of a window. But this, this is, and of course that's okay, the kids, you know, they, but, but the ark is, is specifically given these instructions. And we, uh, several years ago, uh, seniors took us to the, to the reproduction of the ark. How many of y'all, I know Alice, I know you was on it, and was. Sir, you were, and it was amazing it's, 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 uh, to go in it and just see how big and huge it is. Uh, I reckon it's, I reckon it's anybody, they need to go. Yeah. It, it's really, really interesting, and it's just so cool. Yeah, how it pumps fresh air into it all the time, just yes. by the, just by being the waves coming up and down in a certain area, it would use it to pump air, fresh air into the, into it at all all the time. This is it is interesting, and you can once you get in it, and you walk through it, you can see and, uh, how it, it easily could 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 have contained the animals that uh, God said, God said it could should be in it, and you have to remember also it don't have to necessarily be. Uh, grown animals. It could be young animals. It could be a young, uh, uh, a young cow, uh, a calf. It don't have to necessarily be. Anyhow, uh, if you ever get a chance to go, you ought to. Of course, it is. It's in uh, uh, Kentucky. It's real close. It's real, it's real close to, uh, to Ohio. It's really yeah, it's just. It's about five and a half south of Cincinnati. Yeah. But the chance you'll go, but anyhow, God go, told him to make this ark, and uh, and it's not like a little boat. I years ago I heard that the, the 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 dimensions of it are perfect for for uh, surviving in huge waves and so forth. That it, yeah, the Navy says the most violent ship by those dimensions ever built. Yeah, so. and uh, uh, another thing that they. Uh, I think they showed it up there was how they would have um, huge stones that were tied to it as kind of as anchors or to ballast to help keep it keep it from turning over as well. It's interesting what, what all they've done. And they found some of those stones, by the way. Uh, with a, it's a huge stone with a hole in it where it could be bound and tied to the ship. But anyhow, uh, God made God uh, made this this art. Or God gave Noah the dimensions to make this ark. Now, did God sit down and and draw, help him draw out the plans? Well, he probably was if he drew out plans. He probably was there uh, in spirit helping him do out that. Uh, but I believe he give he give uh, Noah uh, the uh, the knowledge and the, the the ability to do that. One other thing that I want to mention here too is that again, remember I've said this before. That that Noah and the earth, and the early descendants of Adam and Eve were much stronger and much probably much more intelligent than we are. They were probably uh, they're, they're, they 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 had uh, well, of course we know that they lived to be over nine hundred years. A lot of them lived to be over nine hundred years old, and I believe that uh, contrary to evolution, that man is not getting wiser and stronger and smarter, but man getting dumber, weaker, and, 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 and can't do <laughs> dumb it. I'm just being frank with you. We're not, we're, I, and I admit it, uh, I don't know if I could do some of the things that my grandparents did. I don't know if I could do it. And a lot of us have to think about them, and they were, they were in my opinion, they were stronger and smarter. I know my grandpa, uh, he never hardly went to school, and yet he could read the Bible. He would read the Bible, I, I, and uh, uh, there's a lot of a lot of things that uh, that are different today that we we couldn't survive if we had to live like they had to live. But anyhow, uh, and I believe it's go, it, when you go back to Noah's time, it's even greater so that uh, they were stronger, they they were uh, mightier. Uh, 
And so I believe, I believe Noah, somebody said, I don't remember, somebody said something about maybe that hired the giants, seemed like somebody, the giants to help them build the <laughs> I don't know about that. There's no proof of it, but he may have. He may get some, uh, get some, uh, uh, some uh, giant that was kind of, was he could work with <laughs> and get him to help him. Yeah, it, it would be a it would be a challenge, and it would be a challenge that I would want to try to take today. You know, another thing scares Roger is uh, he's point. You know, Tommy Gamara, we know that was uh, a lifestyle was happening during that time, homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Again, he's talking about acting the time, male and female. And we're living in a day that if you disagree mm -hmm. with this lifestyle, it's a hate crime. They're they're making laws right now. They're going to stick you in prison. They're going to Matt is going to be in jail someday if, if he lives long enough. Because if we can like, look at this, that this we're living today right here, different than this. Not, mm -hmm. We're not marrying after our time. <laughs> Man, this gender stuff that stink. There, there are laws in our country, and then even in Canada, if a kid comes home eight years old, he wants to wear a boy, he wants to be dressed like a girl. The parents can't make him stop. Now think about it. you have been relieved of your. Parental, parental rights. Yeah. The parents are not notified. That's the right. thing. And that's what's going on here in America, too. It's not just in Canada. We're sitting here silent. The church is sitting here, and you just talking about 9 11. One of the stinkingest things there was a, we had these posters, and everybody said, Amen. Power and pride. This is one of the biggest things God hates. He loves humility, and the opposite of humility is pride. And we said, This is what we want. Yeah, that's how it's war. We still fight 20 some years after mm -hmm. the fact. That's how, that's how Satan fell because of pride. That's the original first sin. Yeah, I agree. We got to get angry in a good way. He says, "Be angry and sin not." I wonder what Jesus would do today if he'd come into the house. Would he do more than turn over tables? Would he do more? He's, he's beating people in the church. He's not out in the world. He's in the church. Mm -hmm. and we think we're doing okay, and you're okay. I'm okay. No, we're not. And yeah, we got churches that promote it. There's churches that promote homosexuality. They promote uh, all this garbage that's, that the Satan is dumping on the earth. And it's, uh, it grieves God, and it's grieving him again today. I, I, I don't know, kind of like uh, uh, Ruth Graham said, that uh, <laughs> if uh, God don't destroy... Punish America, he'll have to he'll have to, he'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Well, it's getting that bad. But uh, and of course, in God, so God gave him the dis instructions on how to make the ark, and He says, "In a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above, and a door of the ark shall thou set on the side thereof, with lower second and third stories, uh, shall thou make it. And behold, I even I." do bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy the, all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Uh, from under heaven and even things that are in the earth shall be, and I just I keep hitting that area that causes it to jump up on me. Uh, where did I get to? 17. 17. It just... Uh, but, I'll start at 17. And behold, I, even I do bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh, uh, wherein is the breath of life. For under heaven and, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Now, <clears throat> the only thing that's not, I think the only thing here that's not mentioned will die would, is the fish. Because they're in the water. I guess they can survive it. But everything else... Anything, anything above that breathes air. It says there that any, it, basically anything has the breath of life or breathes air is going to be destroyed off the face of the earth. Roger, I'm sorry for butting in so much. But can Go you ahead. Imagine? Oh my. When the, the atomic bomb was exploded in Japan, ninety thousand people instantly were wiped out, and thousands of others later saw radiation. But think about this. This was a slow process. 
you it's ankle deep one day and the next day it's up to your knees. And, and you think about it. They think about that. They can't get in now. Jesus, God shut the door. They can't get into the ark after all 120 years of preaching the gospel. Mm-hmm. And now, the, now it's up to her waist and now it's up to her chest. And then what about, I almost drowned it when I was 12 years old because I couldn't tread water. I was climbing up on this ladder and this girl pushed me back. I grabbed her leg. She thought I was trying to be fresh. And I'm, here I am back in the water. And, and I'd always jumped in and you know, slapped the water and got to the other side. But now I don't know how to tread water. I'm, I'm going down for the third time. And I'm, I'm, I'm mine. I think about these people. Days, months, Paul, I don't know how long it took. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. Mm-hmm. And how long did it take each person to die to think about what they didn't do? They didn't repent. Now it scares me, Rod. Who's warning them? They warned them for 120 years. It's too late now. The door's shut. No matter how much they repent now, they can't. And how long did it take them to die? I'm trying to see something here that's not pretty, but it is pretty. They didn't die instantly. They quit weeks maybe before they Finally went under for the last time. I can't breathe no more. I can't. I can't grab a hold of the tree. It's higher than the mountains. You understand what mm-hmm. I'm saying? No hope. Yep. That scares me. Right? What are we doing today? There's no hope. There's people dying going to hell every day. We're sitting here in church, having our parties, having a good time. How many people gonna die today? And we didn't told them the Great Commission. Yeah. I'm sorry, Brother. I'm. I'm torn up inside. Because I'm not doing my job. I'm not preaching. Yeah. It's kind of funny, not funny, but interesting that water he's describing is very representative of sin also, right? It's growing. You know, you see mm-hmm. the water rising in the U.S. Mm-hmm. We can't get in the boat. It's like everybody's starting to drown, right? Um, the difference between, of course, what happened to Noah and us is that we do have an off ramp. We have Jesus specifically, but Robert and I were at Walmart this past weekend. And we were just checking out like normal. And I just kind of looked out the corner of my eye and I saw a family, a lady, and what I thought was a man and two girls. And I looked back again and I realized that it wasn't a man, but it was a, a, a lady dressed as a man. And what hit me at that point, moment in time, and we all know this, but I see it starting to escalate is that sin seems to feed sin, right? So the comment we made, we made earlier about Ron DeSantis, of course, that bill is to prevent children under the great age of four from being taught about sexuality, right? But it also ensures that parents are made aware of anything that's happening with their child that can't be hidden, right? My point here is that sin seems to be feeding sin. So they say, don't say gay. And to be honest with you, the liberals in the country are using that as a cudgel. Imagine this. 15 years ago, if you said, don't say gay, that would have been a normal thing. Now if you say, well, gay is bad, you know, that is a terrible thing, right? So that's the other thing I thought found interesting this week is that you can't say gay is bad because that's used as a cudgel. And that's how they're beating up anyone who is in support of DeSantis and hit the bill he has in place. Mm-hmm. But my point is that I was watching this family and I was thinking about how sin is feeding sin. So you have now two little girls who were exposed in this family with a woman that thinks she's a man and another woman. And now they're going to grow up in that environment, yeah. right? Yeah. So what do you think they're going to choose, mm-hmm. right? It's just feeding itself, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like tentacles born out in this growing and growing. Sin, of sin always takes you further than you want to go, but... Yeah. It didn't hit me till that point in time. I thought, wow, this is not going to get better. That they're just they're indoctrinating children in these environments. And I think it started when you first allowed homosexual homosexuals to adopt children. Who ever thought that was a good idea? I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Right? But it's just feeding itself. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I it's it's scary. And I, what made me think about it is the water he said. I see that I look around me, and that's just one example. I see the water at our feet. And it's coming up right now of course the point is that we have an alternative we have our life raft it is jesus right that the people in those yeah. times didn't have but Good point. it's a scary thing that water represents sin yeah it's rising or the judgment of sin yeah. yeah not only that but we got a nation that's allowing our internet stuff and our tiktok stuff is teaching the same thing and all kids most of them do Instant, but they read it, look at it all the time. So it's 
It's amazing. It's just unbelievable. Our our country is so evil yeah. and not doing anything about it. It's going to get worse. Absolutely. Go ahead. I was listening to American Family Radio and they were talking about this homosexual agenda and everything and, and there's a new movie, Buzz Lightyear, that they had a part in it in the the little animated movie about uh, you know, two homosexual kissing and they had taken it out. But after the Santos of whatever I can't pronounce Santos. his name, his bill and whatever happened down there. Disney put that back in the movie, and they are going all out to get our children. So it's not only in the schools, it is in the little animated <coughs> cartoons, and they are pushing, Disney is pushing it like crazy. Yeah. We, we, you know, we didn't take warning, you know, that this is happening. We're yeah. Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and all these, there's little homosexual symbols in there. So. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I, uh, I've heard a lot about Disney, who are probably all have too on the news about what they're doing, but uh, I suggest not to have anything to do with them. Well, it's time to give a, a my time to quit, so let's all stand and have a word of prayer. And we'll pick it up next week around verse uh, verse 17. All right, let's pray. Your Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the creator and maker of this universe, and, uh, the ones who have formed us and made us, and, and you know us, you knew us before we were uh, formed in our mother's womb, you know, that, that, uh, you knew the purpose and plan that you had for each one of us. And so, Father, I just ask that you'll be with us now, that we will uh, follow after your will for our life, l learn more about what you want us to do, uh, and being obedient, Father, to you in our lives, and, wa and walking in your kingdom and walking in your way uh, as, as Adam and Eve walk with you in the cool of the day. Father, we just praise you, Father, for it. We ask also that you'll be with all those on our prayer list, be with our pastor as he brings a message, and we'll just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father, for it. Uh, I pray now a blessing, Father, over everyone here uh, as we go to our homes and go to, uh, to, go to the preaching service. Yavarechacha Adonai Ve'ish Marecha. Ya'er Adonai Panavilecha Vilkanecha. Yasa Adonai Panavilecha Ve'asimlecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace. As always, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Shem Yeshua. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to have all y'all today.